Adam is a promoter in Fukuoka now. Coming from a coal mining town out in the boondocks, he was bound to want a job that was as modern and westernized as possible. After I took up writing as a career nine years ago and my first novel became a controversial bestseller, he came to see me at a high-rise hotel in Akasaka where I was holed up working on my second book. It's not that way now, but at the time it felt pretty awkward seeing him again. Having suddenly become famous, I was under a good deal of pressure, and I couldn't help being wary about getting dragged back into the crazy sort of life we'd led before. We hardly had anything to say. Adama drank a cup of lukewarm coffee from a thermos I had in the room, and then left. Later, when I tried a cup myself, I felt like an absolute shit for having served such lousy coffee to a friend I'd spent my 17th year with. Fuku-chan, the bassist and singer in Sea Lacanth, now lives in Fukuoka, too. He runs a record shop there, specializing in jazz, and also helps produce concerts occasionally. He always sends me a copy of any good new salsa or reggae record. Every time we meet, we sing Janis Joplin songs together, and when we forget the words it's still Don't you know, don't you know. It's been years since I heard from Otaki and Narashima, the leaders of the Northern High Joint Campus Action Committee, but when I first came to Tokyo, after taking the general exam and getting into a city college, I visited the boarding house they were living in. Scattered about in their room were helmets and wooden poles and leaflets, and a girl in a blouse and jeans and no makeup. We listened to some protest songs and had cups of instant noodles. Yuji Shiro Kushi, the head greaser, became a doctor. I met him once when he was still in medical school. He said that of all the bar girls and strippers he'd met at the joints he went to, only two so far had refused to spend the night with him after he'd shown them his med school ID. Card. The Nymphumi and Margaret Sato is happily married and still in Suspo as far as I know. When I first arrived in Tokyo I saw a lot of Iwase, but for the past several years I haven't been able to get in touch with him. Someone told me he was playing guitar and singing in a downtown strip joint, though I'm not sure if it's true. Back then he was living with a girl who wanted to be a painter, but the last time I saw him he said they'd split up. Minagayama became a boatician. Sasaki, the detective who interrogated me, always sends me a New Year's card. Happy New Year. There's nothing likable about the juvenile delinquents nowadays. Pimples, leader of the industrial arts gang, lost four fingers of his right hand in a hydraulic press while working at Suspo Heavy Industries. He's given up kendo. The half-black Yakuza went straight and now runs a coffee shop in Suspo. My autograph hangs in a frame on the wall there. Kawasaki and Ihara, the P.E. Instructors, took jobs to the schools and are no longer in Suspo. My homeroom teacher, Matsunaga, left Northern High to work at a girls' high school somewhere. Recently, he told me off in the same tone of voice he'd used when I was still a student. Yuzaki, get a haircut. You look terrible. The vice president of the student council, the guy who'd clung to my collar and cried the day after the barricade, joined the Red Army faction while he was at Kyoto University, and was later arrested in Singapore. Nakamura, of Dudu fame, now works as a PR man in Nagasaki. I bumped into him once when I went there to give a lecture. He'd been reading the monthly installments of this novel in a magazine and told me, I was always afraid you'd write about that business sometime, and now you've gone and done it, haven't you? He looked pleased. My love affair with the angel Kazuko, Lady Jane Matsui came to an end on a rainy Sunday in February 1970, after she'd had a change of heart. The angel had found herself an older boyfriend. The boyfriend went to medical school at Kyushu University, while she was a student at Tonju. I continued seeing her occasionally even though we were now just friends, up to the time she announced, in a park where the last petals on the cherry trees were falling, that she was going to marry him. That night I consumed an entire bottle of Suntory Kaku whiskey, half a bottle of Suntory white, 
a bottle of Red Bull port, two plates of curry and two bowls of beef stew. Then, in the wee hours of the morning, I pulled out my flute and started playing it, as a result of which a young Yakuza who lived in my apartment building informed me that I was disturbing his sleep and punched me four times in the face. Since becoming a novelist, I've received several letters from her and one phone call. When she telephoned I was listening to Boz Skaggs's We're All Alone. That's Boz Skaggs, isn't it? Yes. Do you still listen to Paul Simon? No, not anymore. I suppose not. I still do, though, sometimes. How are you getting on? She didn't answer that one. A few days later she sent me a letter. Hearing your voice, with Boz Skaggs in the background, made me feel I was back at school. I like Boz Skaggs, too, but I don't listen to him these days. My life has been just one lousy thing after another for the last 12 months, so I listen to Tom Waits a lot. I'm trying to forget about the bad stuff, but I guess the only way to do that is to start a new life. At the end of the letter, typed in English, was a line from a Paul Simon song. Still crazy after all these years. The chickens that took part in the Morningwood Festival were released by an armor in the mountains near his home after the mines had closed down. They were featured once in a local paper. Wild Super Chickens. 10 meters in a single bound, 